Good evening. Welcome to Focus on Liberia. I am the West African correspondent at Odamara. Welcome to the latest news update on the continent. Focus on Liberia uses this opportunity to come to you with the latest development on the continent. You know, Africa is a continent that is numerous, uh, that is full of numerous news, news that affects our country well-being, those that actually uh, maybe take a different presentation on how we Africans should be reacting. Each time we come across this particular program, we found it sometimes interesting, sometimes appalling. Then sometimes we may even start to wonder why uh, are we facing such predicament on the continent? Does it mean that we don't have competent, competent people, competent leadership style, or we do not have a kind of uh, maybe uh, ideology or what a standardized system of operating? Why do we always have to find ourselves at beyond the picking order? We go on the world stage in time of football participation, our results are actually appalling. You come to international participation in world layer in time of award issues, our results are almost always appalling. So most of those things that happen with us, we we tend to just localize our problem and we found out that uh, our African situation is maybe different from the way we come across it. This is why uh, Focus uses almost every opportunity uh, to ensure that we we definitely handle key issues, key issues that affect our people, key issues that uh, maybe we think that, uh, oh, Africa should not uh, definitely be suffering from maybe this appears that if we had a competent leadership style. Today, of course, we have various type of news that maybe we are going to see. Why is this happening? Essentially, like if we get down into Nigeria, you will see that a minister, a very prominent minister in uh, in article, what uh, in Bola Tinubu government has been suspended because of corruption. Corruption. That's so sad. A minister who was taxed with the responsibility to fight against poverty into Nigeria. Unfortunately, according to widespread allegation on electronic and print media, that ministers transfer colossal amount of money that was meant to fight against poverty into Nigeria into her own personal account. When the government has an established account, where money generated for purposes like that should be sent. So, and she's a female. In fact, the youngest in uh, at, well, the Bola Amen Tinubu's government, as you are the Bola Amen Tinubu, a female. Of a 6,000, I mean, 640,000 uh, United States dollars or 500,000 euro, if not 585,000 million naira into our own private account that sounds so sound it sounds so appalling it is unbelievable and sometimes we tend to see why 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 in fact uh for the for the benefit of others i actually decided maybe before analyzing this news to read the article for you for you to understand actually what happened for you to let us just, just listen to an audio version of the article as I'm going to briefly read it. It's so sad. This is not what we are expecting to be actually happening to our own African countries. Let me just give you the brief audio version of the article. Um, here goes the article. Nigeria's president uh, has suspended a minister over the alleged diversion of more than 585 million naira or 640 United States thousand United States dollars or 500,000 euro public money into our own personal accounts. Okay. Humanitarian Affairs and Public Alleviation Minister Beta Idu was suspended on Monday following account. That is what the statement is saying. Okay. Listen, excuse me. A statement from Bola Tinobu's office said he had ordered an investigation into Dr. Duru's account. Dr. Duru has denied any wrongdoing. Her office said she had approved the transfer into a personal account, which was not in her name, but said it was for the implementation of grants to vulnerable groups. 
That's what she said. Dr. Drew, at 37, is the youngest minister in praying president of Tinobu's cabinet and is seen as a close ally of the president. The suspension of the minister is a rare occurrence in Nigeria. Dr. Idus is the first to lose her job since President Tinobu took office in May last year. Her predecessor, I mean his predecessor, Mamadou Buhari, sacked only two ministers during his eight-year tenure. Last week, local media reported on a leaked document that allegedly showed Dr. Duru's instruction instructing the senior treasury officer to transfer the money to a personal account of Bridget Anielu, the account for the government grant for vulnerable groups initiative. Reports that that Dr. Du had asked for the funds to be moved to a personal account rather than a government one caused outrage. Mr. Dinobu, Mr. Tinubu called for an investigation into this transfer on Sunday. He asked the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, for a thorough investigation into all aspects of the financial transaction involving the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, said on Monday. Mr. Tinubu has also asked Dr. Dury to comply with the investigation. He also call upon the reform gov all government institutions involving to reform institutions that run the national social investment program initiative like the grant for vulnerable groups that aim to tackle poverty stressing the need to win back lost public confidence this is sad and yeah, I, I admire the last statement lost public confidence look at this very young woman 37 given the opportunity to lead the poverty alleviation ministry. Nigeria, in as much as we think it is rich, it is as much as poor as we think it is rich. Thinking about the vast land and its population, when you equate it to what is happening, Nigeria is one of the poorest countries on earth. Honestly speaking, you can watch at the vast population, you watch at the number of funds being generated per day, and how those funds are distributed, and you see the poverty. Of people into the country so sad that particular minister is under investigation and uh, we are thinking that the president should use the efcc the economic crime commission to ensure that uh, the some people call it the anti-graft commissions or institutions or countries you call it uh, anti-corruption commission some people call it anti-corruption they want to use them to ensure that this lady is fully investigated. And she has been asked to resign. And the, the president definitely told her to comply with the investigation. And uh, if she's not guilty, then let the court exonerate her. So now she has all the opportunity to go before the court system and exonerate her person from this widespread allegation that have caused a public outrage into Nigeria. It's a very sad event, and uh, we should actually look on this thing with key eyes. Unfortunately, we're not seeing things happening in our neighboring countries. We saw what happened in, like, in Nigeria, I mean Liberia, when huge funds were being catered away. We saw certain people coming, like uh, even the auditors that we are there to investigate the case, they were killed. So we are expecting sitting government, even when uh, Opom we is stick is handing we hand over definitely uh, to uh, Joseph Juma Buaka. What we are expecting is that full investigation should be mounted against former government officers who handled public offices to give thorough account of what they did. But because that culture has not been into Liberia, when issues like that have been raised or because these are some of the things that Joseph Juma Buaka said uh, what, in in uh, what in his quotation messages, necessarily those that you are saying, let us investigate. These are the normal thing because he has actually been given the public confidence. People think and feel that he should do thorough investigation and prosecute all of those people. But who knows what may happen? Who definitely knows what may happen? Who knows if he may not end up even appointing some retired politician? Don't mind him if he, if he did that because he's also somebody who believes maybe uh, in age... Uh, what in age mentality because he think and feel that uh, young people. In fact, these are some of the w w w things that he was actually uttering. I'm doubting, will he give young people the opportunity into his governance system? Because you are saying that age is associated with wisdom, 
and uh, young people have actually feel certain parts. Maybe if we allowed a well a man with wealthy experience coming to lead Liberia, he will have to do something very positive. But I believe that he's an associate, and uh, he will definitely ensure that uh, Liberia's repetition is definitely uh, restored or reinstalled and help certain things. So let's come into the Gambia. Uh, as government minister under Dr. Yaya Jami's government has actually been arrested in uh, 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 in the Swiss capital and he's actually facing trials. You know, um, in Swaziland, they have what they call international jurisdiction. They have the opportunity or they establish a court system over there that tries citizens who committed crimes against human humanity, maybe economic crime or whatsoever, in war crimes, if he gets into this country. I think uh, he also, the, this, that this same court uh, has also jailed a Liberian by the name something like Kushia. Kushia was also jailed some times ago by this same uh, uh, Swaziland government. And now they are investigating uh, Usman Sonko. Sonko was one of the prominent ministers under President Yaya Jami's government. Uh, Yaya Jami led the Gambia from a very, very long time, 1996 to 2016, when he lost the election to uh, to this man, Adam Ambaru. Pesci con considered the people later on, he decided to change his mind. He was being threatened by Ikoas and other people, which he eventually uh, relinquished power today. He found himself in Malabo, in the, in the Republic of Guinea, Equatorial Guinea. Uh, Mr. Sanko is definitely on a trial for rape, killing, uh, maybe uh, adoption of politicians, then also torture of other people. He has definitely denied the act, but now up to the, 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 court, the court system of Swaziland visited uh, the Gambia on six different occasions and 40 different instances we have been uh, listening to, viewed, uh, recorded. Um, most of those people will be taken to Swaziland to ensure that uh, they give a, a formal prosecution against his person. And they are saying that uh, they will ensure that uh, he's been fully, uh, he, he's, he fully account for what he did during the 10 or the, 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 the what, the, during the, the, the 34 years or 30 years lead or, or lead of Yaya Jami uh, into the Gambia. Yaya Jami is also in Equatorial Guinea and he should be definitely be prosecuted. There are pieces of evidence against the person. Of course, um, Zambia set up a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. They are investigating hideous crimes of people that actually committed crimes against uh, humanity, those that rape, kill, and uh, maybe uh, exploited their economy. They are hoping that all of those people will definitely uh, be brought to book. Of course, the case, this same court, uh, sentence uh, a Liberian uh, in June 2023. Uh, that is Ali Kosha to 20 years in prison. In, he was actually accused of cannibalism, rape, and uh, other unlawful killings into the country during the country uh, civil war. And this same court also has also handed uh, what uh, what a kind of life imprisonment uh, to Bai Lu, one time member of the junglers. He was also part of the DRC initials and all of those people. So they are seeing that uh, maybe I may have of, of DRC or what, uh, or, or what uh, the Gambia. And uh, this same man saying that the man, Sonko, who has been accused, well, the person who was responsible for the country uh, intelligence agency was the one heading the unit and he was the one doing all of those killings. He's definitely not responsible. But the court is asking him to go and maybe free himself or exonerate himself before a court of law so that they can see if whether he was responsible or not. So going to uh, into uh, Mozambique. In Mozambique, on New Year, the unfortunately horrible things happening in the Dagado region. Civilians, we have been macheted, villages set on fire, women, we are raped, some of them tortured, and we are driven out of their villages. We are attacked by a kind of jihadist movement. People are even associated that jihadist movement to a Shabab that actually established itself into Somalia. And they are saying that uh, the the uh, the Luandan forces are actually responsible to install peace into that, that particular place of the land of, of the country. Unfortunately, because of one or two circumstances, they are facing huge challenges on the implementation of that peace project. So they are actually calling upon uh, the Southern African country to ensure that these people are being protected because part of the South African and Eastern African countries are definitely suffering 
from huge amount of those things. And to move via this movement is creating calamity and it is trying to maybe expose the country to other uh, maybe problems that we are thinking that these things should not be associated with them. So let's see, UN condemns uh, 28 killing of civilians in South Sudan. Fortunately, North Sudan is taking problem and South Sudan, of course, Sudan or North Sudan is definitely facing their own problem. South Sudan now is, uh, you have civilians who have been killed over there because of battle over cattle and grassland, rape killing, uh, extrajudicial killing in time of tribal or section and mentality. We have somebody we think and feel that they belong to this particular section. You should not come here. And because of uh, inadequate land, land system where they will take their cattle, sheep, or gold to ensure that uh, these uh, uh, gold sheep or cattle have the, uh, enough grassland to feed on them. And that has resulted into killing by clan, sessions, ethnicity, rape, and whatsoever. Thing. So the United Nations mission in South Sudan has condemned the act and they are calling upon the government of South Bakia and Real Matia to ensure that. They fully investigate this thing. And some plan by the land that South Sudan was definitely facing the tendency of the government being overthrown. The, the, the president retaliated by arresting some prominent military officers and certain civilians whom they were thinking that they were behind the potential coup d'etat. They are now in prison and investigation that are taking place. Unfortunately, we are now also seeing that even in North Sudan, here you have uh, the like of Omar Bashir, which was, who was in power now. We are seeing like... Uh, Hamdidi and uh, Dagado are fighting against each other, and um, South Sudan is also having another concern. These are also sad things. So let's go into uh, Uganda, that is in East Africa. To me, this is sad, but we have to accept it the way it is. Uh, the Ugandans ministers or public officers are being trained on mannerism. Sad. I was thinking that if you graduate from universities, you should come out well mannered. You can have two, three types of education. You have the formal, you have the non-formal, you have the informal. And I believe that uh, non-formal type of education, this is type of characterization. You can learn it from your parents, from the community, behavior, even in churches, whatsoever. Too. Unfortunately, public officers in, in Uganda are trained to have flamboyant, showy mentality. And their performance of late is actually this man. They have been involved into attacking civilians, maybe torturing people. They can even tell you any type of word, especially when you confront them in public. Let me tell you, this is the responsibility of the public to confront their public officers, maybe ask questions about things that they doubt. Unfortunately, we have learned sin and weakness on several occasions how a public officer treat us like me as trash. If you confront them to ask them key questions, if even when journalists confront them, they will insult you, they will bastardize your profession, and they will try to make you as if you are only portion or relegated to the position of the listener to take order and you shouldn't ask any question. So I think the government of uh, Uranium Museveni has been in power since 1986. I was born. And that is the time now we are now seeing Uranium Museveni as a person. What is he doing now? He's trying to say, maybe let his public officer learn how uh, they should be trained and how they should also be uh, speaking to the public because maybe they are thinking that uh, most public officers actually lack the mannerism on how to speak to the public. So they want to ensure that they have that culture when they are approaching people. It is the responsibility of the people to, to ask you. It is the responsibility of those who have been governed to ensure that they ask you key questions, especially when they are not living up to their tax, when they are not living up to their expectation. Because he signed a social contract to you. But these people with their flamboyant or showing mentality, when you ask them, they can come. Their attitude is very posy. And it's so imposing and posy, which is very wrong. So now the government is training around 1,000 1, public officers. But there is outcry because this money is definitely being used because we are thinking that they should be training to their institution on how to encourage and embrace people who tend to ask them questions, key questions that they are challenging. It's a very sad event. We should definitely understand our public officers should learn better mannerism. Their manner should be better. We expect, because they are the symbols of our country. They are the symbol. Why do you think when we see them, we give them respect? They are the symbol of the country. They are like our public flags. We see them, they should be respected. They should be honored. That's one thing for them. They are not trained 
and some of them are trained but they are not qualified so we are seeing that uh, maybe these people should definitely uh have a kind of good mentality on how to govern and how to treat their populace there was a time uh one i am not just forgetting the the former governor of nigeria and he was he's also a lawyer and he was part of the uh uh, uh this man government good lord jonathan there was a time he was i'm just forgetting the the governor's name and the state but this was a live event it is actually on youtube he went to actually reach the people to and maybe he was giving them certain information about the government and just try to see how he can uh, maybe reconnect the image of the people so a journalist asks him but who is rolling the bank for this particular who is footing the bill he became so annoyed, he insulted the man, calling all sorts of names, calling him like, I don't know, these are certain languages I don't want to use on this platform. But it was so insulting, so confusing. These are some of the things. You, 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 you have to learn how to be reasonable enough and think that these people that are us, we are responsible to ask a certain question respond to us positively by norms that is what we expect from you but anyway let's leave it for another day but it was very sad i don't want to repeat those words but it is actually on the youtube he assaulted that journey. in fact he was thinking if the man did not leave the place we order for his torture he was so furious even referring him to his to his uh, to his bosses he said a lot. He said a lot. That was hugely sad, hugely unbelievable. And we do not expect our public officers maybe to be behaving so to people who they are governing. So let's see another one. Israel is fighting against Hamas. There is war in Gaza, but the Hamas or Hamas is calling upon Egyptians. Or the Egyptian government to open the border so that over 6,000 wounded civilians in Gaza to go for treatment into Egypt. Unfortunately, Egypt cannot open this border if Israel did not give the green light. And people are actually suffering because of what Hamas did on the 7th October 2020. Three, they attack Gaza, macheted, rape, kill, tortured, and kidnap Israelis, Americans, French citizens, German, Africans, you name them. Israel has retaliated by turning Gaza into a mere rubble. And they want to see that Hamas is as a faction is eliminated. But Hamas is, Hamas is an ideology. They could be eliminated to the other nations we grew up to be Hamas. But you don't want to totally do away with the Hamas structure and maybe come out with a very different structure of government according to them. Give Hamas, I mean, they will give the Palestinians the opportunity to govern themselves, but security will be provided by Israelis and other people. And now people are saying, no, let it be the way it is sad event but i believe that egypt may not open the board the border line except if israel can give the green light then uh, in zambia over 200 people have actually died from uh, cholera irresponsible government having them in africa is creating huge problems people are still dying of common diseases that are preventable because of lack of quality drinking water our citizens are being killed all over the country. Bazamia is one of the 20 countries into Africa here to eliminate cholera because they do not have enough pure drinking water. And schools have actually been delayed because the government is saying that cholera outbreaks are becoming severe and they wouldn't want the student to be or the people to be exposed to such things. So they have definitely delayed the reopening of schools. And uh, they are hoping that uh, maybe those things will help to ensure that. Uh, uh, the students have uh, pieces of advice that they prevent them not
to also be caught along this line that we definitely create some amount of trouble at the end of the day. Uh, so I think uh, there is a breaking news here that I really want to read. Maybe not a breaking news, latest news that I really want to read uh, about one of our prominent big shops in Africa. Or oh, one of our prominent, he is now late. He's now late, TB Joshua. TB Joshua is now late. It is just like when you're having other people who have been caught, celebrities and whatsoever, to like that of market just, uh, what? The market just, just in also now being in investigated. So it's the same thing like Ara Kelly is in prison. Uh, even one of the popular uh, Hollywood, uh, how it once seen, is also in prison. So we are also seeing widespread evidence against TB Joshua. Uh, he was the mega church leader because of rape, torture, and of worshippers' fine. So let us see. I'm going to read it, read the, the story, and um, we'll close from that. I think Christians need to be very careful with certain things. I'm not saying this is true, but it's what the media is saying. It's what the media is saying. So let's see. Evidence of widespread abuse and torture by founder of one of the world's biggest Christian evangelical churches has been uncovered by the BBC. Dozens of ex synagogue Church of All Nations members Five British alleged atrocities, including rape and forced abortion by Nigerian late T.B. Joshua. The allegation of abuse in a secretive Lagos compound spanned almost 20 years. The Synagogue Church of All Nations did not respond to allegations, but said previous claims have been unfounded. T.B. Joshua, who died in 2021, was a charismatic and hugely successful preacher and tele-evangelist who had immense global uh, following. The BBC's findings over a two year investigation include dozens of eyewitnesses' account of physical violence of torture carried out by TB Joshua, including instances of child abuse and people being whipped and chained. Numerous women who say they were sexually assaulted by TB Joshua, with a number of claiming that they were repeatedly raped for years inside the compound. Multiple allegations of false abortion inside the church followed the alleged, alleged rape of Joshua, including one woman who said she had five terminations. Multiple first-hand accounts of detailing how Joshua faked his miracle healing, which we are broadcast to millions of our people around the world. One of the victims, a British woman called Ray, was 21 years old when she abandoned her degree at Britain University in 2022. In 2002, and was recruited into the church, she spent the next 20 years as one of Joshua's so-called disciples inside his maze-like concrete compound in Lagos. A shocking journey into a maze of manipulation and terrifying abuse perpetrated by one of the most powerful religious figures of the 21st century. We all thought we, we are in heaven, but we are in hell, and, tell, and hell terrible things happen, she told the BBC. Ray, who says she was sexually assaulted by Joshua and subjected to a form of solidarity confinement for two years. The abuse was so severe, as she says. She attempted suicide multiple times inside the compound. The Synagogue Church of All Nations, Sukha, has also a global following of operating Christian TV channel called Emmanuel TV and social media networks with millions of viewers throughout the 1990s and early 2000s. Tens of thousands of pilgrims from Europe, the American South, South East Asia, and Africa traveled to the church in Nigeria to witness Joshua performing in a miracle. At least 150 visitors live with himself as disciples inside his compound in Lagos, sometimes for decades. More than 25 former disciples spoke to the BBC from the UK, Nigeria, US, South Africa, Ghana, Namibia, and Germany, giving powerful corroborated testimony about their experience within the church with the most recent experiences in 2019. Many victims were in their teens when they first joined. In some of the British cases, their passport to Lagos was paid for by Joshua in coordination with the other UK churches. Ray and multiple other interviews compare their experiences to being a cult. Jessica Kamu from Namibia says her ordeal lasted more than five years. She said she was 17 when Joshua first raped her. 
that subsequent substances of rape by T.B. Joshua led to her having five false abortions while there. This we are, what, back, backdoor type medical treatment that we are given through it could have killed us, she told the BBC. Other ex interviewees say they were stripped and beaten with electrical cables and horse whips and routinely denied sleep. On his death in June 2021, T.B. Joshua was hailed as one of the most influential pastors in African history. Rising from poverty, he built an evangelical that empire that led that counted dozens of political leaders, celebrities, and international footballers among his associates. He did, however, attack attract some controversy during his lifetime when he when his guest house for George Pilgrim's collapse in 2014, killing at least 116 people. The BBC investigation, which was carried out with international media platform Open Democracy, is the first time multiple is the first time multiple church insiders have come forward to speak on the record. They say they have spent years trying to raise alarm, but have infected them in silence. A number of other eyewitnesses in Nigeria claim they were physically attacked and in one case shot at after previously speaking out against the abuse and posting videos containing allegations on YouTube. A BBC crew that attempted to record footage of the church Lagos compound from Public Street in March 2022 was also fired at the church security and was detained for a number of days. The BBC contacted Sokan with the allegations in our investigation. It did not respond to them, but denied previous claims against T.B. Joshua. Making unfounded allegations against Prophet T.B. Joshua is not a new occurrence. None of the allegations was ever substantiated, it wrote. Four of the British citizens who spoke to the BBC said they reported the, the cause, the abuse to the UK authorities after escaping the church. They say no further action was taken. In addition, a British man and his wife emailed eyewitness account of their ordeal and video evidence, including recording of being held at gunpoint by the men describing themselves as police who are also members of the SOCA, to the British High Commission in Nigeria in March 2010 after playing the church. In his email, the man said his wife had been repeatedly sexually assaulted and raped by Joshua. He warned. The commission that other British nationals we are still inside the compound facing atrocities. He also says no action was taken. The UK Foreign Office did not respond to this claim but told the BBC that it takes all reports of crime, including sexual assault and violence against British nationals overseas, very seriously. So con continues to strive today under the leadership of Joshua's widow Ellen. In July 2023, she led a tour of Spain. Aneka who left Derby in the UK to join Sokan at the age of 17, told the BBC that she believes there are many other victims who have yet to speak to who are yet to speak out. She hopes further steps will be taken to uncover Joshua's action. I believe the synagogue church of all nations needs a thorough investigation into why this man was able to function for so long the way he did, she said. Additional reporting. Oh, I think uh, this is so sad, but it has almost happened everywhere, and it was with the like of Ara Kelly. We also learned and saw what happened with Harry Weinstein, and now we are seeing the like of Michael Jackson, even though he's now late. Uh, all issues have been investigated. I think I'm sure that celebrities all over the world should definitely be investigated, and should they be seen like uh, people who have never involved into petty crimes. And many times they cover themselves all because of maybe the situation that they might be exposed to. Especially when you come to church leaders, their positions are definitely unquestionable and they do not even entertain anything that is sound so critical. You could be described as a social rebel, kick out of church, and they will definitely ask you out of certain place. And most people who knew a lot about them are actually uh, uh, in the yonder world. Those who still have certain important messages or leakages about them are yet to release those things because they know the earlier you do so, the best time you will be sent to grave. And they found it very difficult how to relate this thing to the populace. Let's be very careful with our church masters, our uh, imams, our Muslims, leaders, uh, whosoever that is well placed, just like politicians, they can also be involved into dubious activity. 
Thank you, it's been me, Focus on Liberia, West African correspondent, coming to you with the latest development on the continent. Join me tomorrow, same time, same place, to come with another positive, maybe news that may affect our country.